वेलकम बैक फ्रॉम द शॉर्ट ब्रेक और हमें इस बात की खुशी है कि हमने जो टॉपिक पिक किया है इसके अंदर तमाम लोगों का इंटरेस्ट होगा वो तमाम लोग जो इंटरेस्ट के ऊपर काम कर रहे हैं या कोई सवाल हैं आप अपनी सवाल हमें ईमेल के थ्रू भी भेज सकते हैं लुकमान एट चेस वर्ल्ड ट्रैवल डॉट कॉम ताकि हम उसको नेक्स्ट प्रोग्राम के अंदर ऐड कर सकें लेस गो बैक टू डॉक्टर माइन वेयर वी हैड अ ब्रेक वी वर टॉकिंग अबाउट द इस्लामिक लोन लाइक इस्लामिक मॉर्गेज यस आई वॉज सेंग दैट लाइक आफ्टर स्क्रूटिनाइजिंग द कॉन्ट्रैक्ट ऑफ दोस कंपनीज and not only that we held an annual convention for imams in the us more than 200 250 imams attend imams attended from all over the us from coast to coast as they say and we brought uh, uh, representatives from those companies we listened we have heard attended their presentation and their justification based on what they claim that their mode of finance is a halal one uh, and then we get back Uh, in a closed meeting for the fatwa committee we came up with a with a conclusion or with a declaration it is posted on on, on amja website as well as in al huda university if you go to al huda university that or there is a, a link to amja declaration we found out that it's it's really really hard if not even close to impossible to implement a genuine and a sound and an an interest 100% free islamic mode of finance as long as those companies are connected with the major uh, uh, federal investment companies freddie mac and fidi may obviously in order for their contracts to be sellable to freddie mac they have to comply with the rules and regulations and restrictions of those uh, investment investment uh, companies and this is definitely uh, in a contrary of the islamic principles of finance maybe one company uh, i don't want to mention names here but maybe one of the uh, islamic mortgage companies were up to certain limit successful in just turning around the, you know the the, the the system and come up with a model that is islamically acceptable it's not pure 100% halal i would say it is you know uh, acceptable within the given circumstances again for more details our muslim brothers and sisters can just visit uh, amja website or go to huda university that or there is a link uh, shows the uh, amja declaration regarding those uh, companies we listed i think the five six major islamic mortgage uh, companies in, in the us with a brief explanation why we endorse uh, company x and we do not endorse company y or z there is some you know uh, justification to the best of our of our knowledge uh, since we have uh, 30 minutes only for this program so i will ask you a quick question yeah sure sure uh, regarding the bank loan bank loan is one of the most explicit examples of uh, riba uh, that that muslims are 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 required to avoid this this question actually brings me back a little bit to the definition of of riba we have we have two different major uh, kinds of riba that's riba of increase riba al fadl and riba of delay or riba an nasiha the 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 i would say the quite prevalent and the widespread kind of uh, uh, interest here in the us is riba an nasiha or the interest loan the interest loan means that that in a way or another okay someone is in debt to somebody else with a certain amount of money and uh, he or she owes other people money either because of a sale contract like you have bought something in an installment payment okay you did not borrow money but you owe the other party some money okay whatever you owe is a debt okay now in the islamic fiqh in the islamic financial system debt is a loan debt is a loan by default okay. you bought a car for example for $20,000 right an installment right and your monthly payment is $500 as long as you owe the seller $500 then you are in debt that the debt takes the exact rules of loan as if you have borrowed from him although you did not borrow right. so this is i mean this is one one scenario sometimes even you buy a service even the utility company okay like the water and, and the sewer system and, and and the phone company or whatever the utility bill might be 
whatever you owe the utility company is a debt. Debt means loan. See? Right. So uh, even even if you exchange, for example, something for something else, as long as you know uh, food is concerned, which is something not that uh, I would say common nowadays, but long time ago during the lifetime of the Prophet والسلام, people used to transact by exchanging. Okay, I give you barley, you give me wheat, I give you rice, you give me sugar. It's not the case nowadays. But even when it comes to exchanging commodity for a commodity, food for food, riba might might affect this. Uh, this transaction. So back to your question, when someone approaches a conventional bank, an interest-based traditional bank, asking for a loan, then he knows from the beginning, obviously, that he will be charged extra money. You borrow $1,000, it will not be 1,000 when you pay it back. It has to be 1,000 plus, right? The plus is, is interest. Uh, maybe uh, an exception here. When I say that borrowing from banks is prohibited, which is the case, this is the default rule. However, there are some exceptions, okay? There is no way, there is no way, okay, for people to lend with riba. There is no exception here. There is no necessity, there is no desperate need for someone to lend other people with, with interest. But it is very possible that, you know, someone is running out of resources and he or she could not find but an interest-based uh, interest loan uh, from a bank is borrowing for him at that particular point where he is desperately in need for it, is it halal if there is a necessity involved here? Well, obviously the answer is yes. Will this person be held accountable in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of borrowing with interest? The answer is no. Okay, because, because again, there is a necessity involved here. However, we have to make sure that before we go to the bank, there is a necessity and we are lacking all the halal resources of, of fund or finance and then we can you know, go to the least option or the latest option, which is which is uh, approaching banks for. Brother, uh, my, uh, for, today in our program, a lot of parents and the students are watching. My question for the student: Can they borrow a student loan? Again, okay, this issue has been uh, discussed in depth uh, uh, within our fiqh uh, council, Amja, and uh, here is the conclusion. Loans here in the U.S. are not the same. We have subsidized loan and unsubsidized student loan. The subsidized one, the one that is subsidized by the government, right, means right. it is restricted to certain people who are eligible. Right. You need to match a certain criteria. You need to show your financial need in order for you to be eligible for a subsidized loan based on need. Okay? And there's unsubsidized loan that's given to anyone. You don't have to prove your need to be eligible for unsubsidized loan. Now, before I answer the question, it's, it's really, really unfortunate that our students, our, our, our kids, our children are, excuse me all, are lazy enough, okay, to the extent that they do not even willing to look for different uh, financing opportunities. It's really unfortunate to say that millions of dollars are returned back to the federal government unclaimed on an annual basis because people are not looking for. Can you give a couple of examples or name? <laughs> okay, I will. I will. Uh, I will uh, okay, I will. I will give you some some examples. According to our fatwa, students have to go with the with the halal sources. We have financial aids, right? And we have scholarships, right? And we have work study. I mean, you can work as a student with your professor within within the department. Okay. Now within the scholarship. There are scholarships for minorities. There are scholarships for uh, like uh, students with uh, with excellent academic achievement. There are some scholarships for uh, international students, for some minorities, for those who have a kind of disabilities. I mean, there are a variety of options when it comes to grants, when it comes to uh, scholarships, and even when it comes to financial aid. Okay. Now, if someone tried his best, okay. And all these like sources are not enough for him or right. her to proceed or to pursue a degree. Then if it is an option to lower the number of credit hours, then he has to go with this option. I mean, just to stay away from riba, you know, as, uh, as much as we can. The question here, what if, what if it's not working? I'm right. still, I need more fund uh, to pursue a degree. Then you can go with a subsidized loan. Right. Subsidized loan actually, 
uh, by law, they give, uh, uh, they call it a grace period. Grace period that's maybe six months, maybe sometimes up to nine months, okay? After the graduation, after graduation, in which a student is required to pay off the debt in full within the grace period. If he successfully did that, then the loan will be counted as an interest-free loan. Technically speaking, technically, it's not an interest-free. It is an interest-bearing loan, but the one who is charging interest is the government, and the one who is paying interest is the government itself. So the lender is the one who is charging, and the lender who is, you know, uh, the one who is paying. Now, from a fiqh perspective, it doesn't make sense. It is an interest-free loan. Brother mine, um, like I said in the beginning of the show, we're going to have two programs on the interest. Uh, right now, we are closing this program. And thank you very much one more time sure. to be in our show. My, My priority pleasure. is to, you know, to provide a lot of information. And based on the Islamic information to our community, that they will get benefit. We have a lot of issue on the daily basis which we cannot address ourselves, but we do have a question in our mind, and I'd like to invite my all audience and the community people that next program you can raise a question and you are more than welcome uh, to call us. And uh, like, just like we are talking today with you, interest, riba, sooth. We this program, I think, we have to do 5-6 programs, and then we have to do uh, subject cover hoga aur hum chahenge ki aap log is program ka hissa bane april ke andar hum log aapke live question lenge with dr mind ke sath and hum logo ki puri koshish rahegi ki taqreeban 7 to 8 program interest ke upar ho taaki hum log zyada se zyada benefit hasil kar sake at the end mai chairs world travel ki taraf se ek dafa phir announce jo kar raha hu wo ye hai ki aap umrah ke packages hum se le sakte hain Airline ke ticket is very good and very good. And the package is very good. 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 The package is Chess World Travel Co. or Unka number yaad rakhe 1855 ASAP Chase. 1855 ASAP Chase. Ek dafa phir bhoj shukriya is program ko dekhne ka. Hum log isi subject ke saath next program mein aapke saath hazir hote hain. Thank you very much.